The year 2023, what will it hold in store for us at Farsight, the world, and for you? What big ticket items should you expect? That is what I want to talk with you about today. So, what I'm going to do is to bring everything together that I know for certain will happen in 2023, and then to blend it in with what I think will happen given what I see happening in the world, and based on what I know is going on behind the scenes. The biggest ticket item that is on the near-term horizon is disclosure. The process of triggering that to happen begins in earnest around March or April 2023, when Farsight begins its new project that is aimed at showing people, and I mean everyone, how to successfully take pictures and video recordings of extraterrestrial spaceships, commonly known as UFOs or UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. You see, until large numbers of people can actually see the ET ships, they will not believe that extraterrestrials really exist. This is because the information controls placed on this planet's population are so severe that hardly anything can currently get through. A huge effort has long been made by the powers that be to restrict what common people know, and this is all part of a plan to keep people subdued so that a certain group of extraterrestrials, oppressive ETs, can continue to operate with impunity on this planet, doing things that quite frankly just about everyone would object to if they knew for certain that those things were happening. Now. If Farsight focuses only on remote viewing, that will not change. We have to address the issue of physical verification of remote viewing results. There are about 8 billion people on this planet, and most of those people are living in an information deprivation bubble that we need to pop. Farsight may have a loyal following, but it is not yet big enough to cause a problem for the oppressive ETs who have resources to manipulate human governmental and corporate leadership to keep the secrecy lid on the subject. So, simply telling people the deep truth about how this planet is secretly being run as a prison will not wake people up. What is needed is for the people themselves to create the awareness. For this to happen, it must come from the bottom up, not the top down. So around March or April of 2023, we are going to launch a new show on Farsight that will complement everything else we do. Most of the show will be on YouTube, but an expanded version will appear on FarsightPrime.com. Now, the central focus for this new program will be to show you how to successfully take video recordings of UFOs and how to analyze those video recordings to determine the size and speed of the crafts. Finally, the technology available to humans today is sufficiently advanced and available to normal people that taking photos of ET spacecraft is really possible. You see, UFOs exist in huge numbers, and there is not just one group of extraterrestrial UFOs. Indeed, in our solar system, there are a couple of major factions of ETs siding off with one another. We are talking about thousands and thousands of ships. Normally, these ships are invisible to the human eye, and there is a reason for this. But that is going to change in just a few months. In just a few months, you will be able to take your cell phone out in the middle of the day and take really nice video recordings of extraterrestrial spacecraft, UFOs that are flying right above your backyard or above your house or apartment if you live in a city. The ships are not really invisible, but there are really good reasons why you cannot normally see them. All that will change around March or April 2023 once we explain what to do and why you have to do it a certain way. Plus, we will show you a bunch of videos that we are taking that show you these things, plus videos that show you exactly what we did to get the videos. So just be patient for a few months. We have to prepare both ourselves and you for when that happens. This will be really big, and it will trigger disclosure big time. So we have to do it correctly, and you have to be ready for it when we do it. So hang tight for a few months and keep watching these intelligence briefings as we slowly spell out the details before the new show airs in March or April. Now, think about this. If we are correct about oppressive ETs running this planet as a prison, they are not going to take this all lying down, so to speak. This will seriously disrupt their apple cart. Obviously, we at Farsight believe that we are totally protected on a variety of levels, or we would not be able to do anything. So we are going to be able to do our part, but the oppressive side will be allowed to do whatever they want to muddy the waters, so to speak. 
They cannot stop us from doing our part, but they can try mighty hard to stop what we do from being effective. The oppressive side knows full well that disclosure of the ET presence on Earth will be a game over moment for them. It will threaten everything that they do. So they have to fight back without actually being able to physically eliminate us here at Farsight. They also cannot stop you from knowing the truth. They can only confuse you, make you afraid, trick you, and stuff like that so that you would have trouble breaking free from their control. It is all a game of mental manipulation, psychological warfare at its most potent level. So what will happen when we show you how to take video recordings of ET ships? Well, obviously, the normal response will be to try to discredit what we show you. Now, if we try to simply show you recordings that we take of the ET ships, that type of discrediting stuff could actually work. No matter what we show you in terms of photographs that we take ourselves, the powers that be could tell you that it was all CGI stuff that came out of video editing software or Photoshop or even an AI art creation program such as DALI or Midjourney. And they would claim that we are trying to scam the public. So for this to succeed, we absolutely need to show you how we are taking the videos and how we process the videos with our software so that you can duplicate the process with your own cameras and software. You can even improve upon the process once you understand it. Then, what we want you to do is to start posting your own videos and photographs all over the internet, everywhere you can, everywhere, and tell people exactly how you took the photos. You can even get invited onto internet podcasts and talk shows and discuss these things and show people what you have achieved. You see, the oppressive ETs can only try to intimidate you. Because of limits that are, at least for now, being placed on the oppressive ETs by another group of ETs who we call the free will ETs, the oppressive ETs cannot stop anything that happens from within the society itself. They can try to scare you into not acting, but they cannot stop you from acting if you are not afraid and do it anyway. Their indirect controls of your emotions and thoughts through fear and intimidation is all they have to work with against you. And if you are not affected by fear and intimidation, there is nothing they can do to stop you. Your oppression is all mental, and understanding that is the way you break free. Finally, once pictures and videos start popping up all over the place, the human authorities will simply look like total fools when they try to ignore it or to ridicule it. Instead, People will laugh at the authorities, and when that happens, the authorities will be forced to respond in some way that will acknowledge the ET presence. And that is when things will get dicey. It is unclear what the authorities will do once many people know how to take pictures and videos of the extraterrestrial ships. The authorities will have some options. Now, I don't have any way of knowing if or when the authorities will do any of these options, but let me explain some possibilities. Again, I am not saying these things will definitely happen. I just know for certain that they are possible options, and it is useful for you to be aware of them so that you can keep track of events if and when they happen. One option will be to accept the fact that public knowledge of the presence of the ETs will be part of a new reality moving forward, and then to try to establish the parameters of that new reality. Fundamentally, the goal will be for the authorities to be able to remain in control of the masses, and this will mean that the oppressive ETs will remain in control of the human authorities and the masses from behind the scenes. Well, what will happen when that time comes? Well, with disclosure, the masses would then know that the authorities have been lying to them for a great many years, and the masses could stop believing anything that the authorities say, and they might then turn to other voices. To prevent that from happening, first and foremost, the powers that be are probably going to do something to discredit many of the major players in the UFO and New Age communities. If they do not do that, then those major players will become more credible than the normal human leadership at all levels, political, military, media personalities, and everyone you normally see feeding you information on a daily basis. The powers that be would simply lose control of the masses to the major players in the UFO and New Age communities, and they are not going to let that happen. 
So to stop that from happening, those major players in the UFO and New Age communities need to be discredited in some way so that they no longer have major followings. So when you start posting your videos of UFOs all over the place, look for a sign that your efforts are making an impact. Expect that one of the first things to happen will be some major scandal that will affect some of the big players in the UFO and New Age communities. Now, if the disclosure movement picks up steam despite discrediting the major players in the UFO and New Age communities, then one possible next step is to create some sort of false flag event. This might involve a staged ET attack, and the human militaries would be seen successfully defending the planet from that attack. That would be aimed at keeping people focused on what traditional human leadership is doing to keep you protected. Now, the goal is to keep you believing that the traditional human leadership is worthy of your trust. They want you to sit back and let them handle things, which ultimately would mean that the oppressive ETs would still control things from behind the scenes. So, a significant scandal to engulf the major players in the UFO and New Age communities, plus a possible false flag operation, might be expected, possibly as early as the second half of 2023. Again, these are options open to the powers that be. I have no way of knowing if they will choose to do these options or exactly when they might do these things. But you can expect that the timing will depend on how quickly the disclosure process matures. The faster you post your videos of the ET ships, the faster these other events may happen. Now, let's talk about the recordings of the UFOs. At Farsight, we have long learned that we cannot publicly discuss anything that is created by someone else. At Farsight, we always present only what we create from start to finish. Back in the old days, in the late 1990s, we were caught in a trap created by others where we were sent photos of a UFO. A radio talk show host called me up and asked me to talk about those photos on the radio. We did not use those photos for anything, and certainly not for remote viewing. We had used a related astronomical photo taken by the late Chuck Schrammick, a newscaster and amateur astronomer from Houston, Texas, someone who I knew personally. But the photos that we were sent in the mail by an unnamed source, well, we did not use those for anything except to talk to the radio host about them at his request. It is a long and complicated story, but the bottom line is that the people who sent us the photos knew that we would be discredited as soon as we talked about them publicly. The goal was to have them in our possession and then to create a scandal about them. Despite promising to keep the photos private, the radio talk show host posted them on his website claiming that we submitted them. <laughs> Then the photos and us were immediately discredited during a huge campaign that seemingly had unlimited resources. Again, a long story. We fell into the trap like babes in the woods. We were kicked off the radio, and the public was exposed to a very long multi-month and well-orchestrated propaganda campaign saying that we were the bad guys. Again, we did nothing wrong except to open the mail and to talk about the photos that we were sent to us in the mail. We were stupid to fall for the plot in the first place, but we had no experience with such matters at the time. So, what did we learn from that? Well, to start with, we learned to never talk about something that we do not create ourselves. Second, those people who will attack us have vastly more resources than we do, and they can orchestrate as big a campaign as needed in order to discredit us. The public will just see a lot of smoke, and then the public will assume that where there is smoke, there is fire. The public will then abandon us, and the powers that be are back in the driver's seat. We also learned how skilled the agents of the powers that be can be. They really are good at what they do. And an academic such as myself has no training in defending against that sort of cloak-and-dagger scandal creation stuff. So, that means that we have to rely on all of you to create your own videos of the UFOs and then to show those videos to the public by posting them on the internet. You will have no problem doing this once you understand what has to be done on a technical level and why. But you will need to do it, and you will need to post those videos everywhere. It will be tons of fun to do, and people have been waiting for this moment for a long time. 
One photo or video posted by one person can be discredited, but millions of photos and videos taken by people all over the world is something the powers that be cannot control. So we will not have a centralized mass sighting that will be forced on humans, say, over a major capital city. Rather, we will get decentralized mass sightings. They will be from all over the world, and they will be recorded with nice cameras and posted on many different venues. Cell phones can also work if you do it right. It may not be possible to post everything on YouTube, although you should try. YouTube and Google have gone deep into shadow banning, and their shadow banning seems to have extended to things dealing with extraterrestrials and even remote viewing. That is, they don't cancel your YouTube account, but they can deny you the right of being discovered by others. So you can put up whatever you want, but no one will know about it. It is a form of indirect censorship. With shadow banning, unless someone searches for you specifically by name on YouTube or Google, your content becomes nearly impossible to find. So it will be important for you to post your videos in a variety of different venues to circumvent the shadow banning done by Google and YouTube. Continue to use YouTube, of course. Do that first. But also use the other video services that are out there, such as Vimeo, Dailymotion, DTube, Odyssey, BitChute, Rumble, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and other social media. Once you have some videos that are nice, you can even try to get interviewed on some podcasts or even some YouTube channels dealing with UFOs. The key is to get nice videos. And once you do that, then posting them so that others can see them will not be a problem. And they will go viral. So what else should happen in 2023 that relates to all this? Understand that the oppressive extraterrestrials are under pressure from the good free will ETs who want to have a reason to kick the oppressive ETs out of the solar system. But the good ETs will not do this unless the Earth masses ask for it. And the oppressive extraterrestrials know that the only way they can get the good ETs to leave them alone is to pressure human political leadership on this planet to sign new and updated agreements to formally allow the oppressive ETs the right to continue operations here on Earth, secret operations with severe human costs, which would be rejected by humanity if humanity knew about them. So time is of the essence. This means that the oppressive ETs will likely try to push human political leadership into a dark corner where the human leadership becomes desperate and the oppressive ETs offer to fix everything if the human leaders will just sign the new contracts. So we are expecting the oppressive ETs to trigger bad stuff to happen that will make things look nearly hopeless pressuring the human leaders to sign those contracts in exchange for having the oppressive ETs fix everything. Human leaders will not be told that the oppressive ETs are responsible for creating the crises in the first place. The plan is to dupe the human leaders and everyone else. If the human leadership signs those new contracts with the oppressive ETs, then the good free will ETs will leave the solar system and Earth and humanity will be a lost cause. So we have a race. And it is disclosure versus the global mess that pressures human leaders to sign bad contracts. The global mess stuff has already started, so disclosure needs to happen soon in order to prevent the signing thing from happening. That is why we at Farsight need to explain to you how to successfully take video recordings of the ET ships now. Disclosure requires that lots and lots of people know how to do this. Understand that taking pictures of UFOs has a variety of issues that need to be addressed in order to do it successfully. And those issues can easily be handled with modern camera equipment and good technique. The two biggest camera issues are the frame rate and the spectrum that is accessed with the camera's digital sensors. Now, increasing the frame rate and adjusting the spectrum into the infrared and ultraviolet realms are things that can be done easily. In terms of the frame rate, the UFOs move really quickly for security reasons. It's hard to hit a moving target, and that is also why it's really hard to get good video of them while recording at 30 frames per second. The ships move so fast that 30 frames a second will not pick them up. You need a minimum of 60 frames a second or better. 
Now, most cell phones can handle 60 frames per second these days, and some better cameras can do 120 frames per second. You can't get too high with the frame rate since that would make the footage difficult to manage because you have to record for an extended period of time. But 60 or 120 frames per second is manageable with modern equipment and software. Then you need certain filters or the removal of certain filters for your camera in order to capture the footage with a usable part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Limiting your footage to the visible light spectrum will not normally work. We will continue to explain why these issues are important as we move forward with our project and how to address these issues properly. There are also matters of how to process the footage. Once you shoot the footage, you have to find the frames where the UFOs are zooming about. So we need to show you how to do that also. Remember, the ships move really quickly. But the fact that the issues have technical solutions that are available to ordinary people now means that taking videos of UFOs is something whose time has come. But first and foremost, understand that there is no problem finding UFOs to take pictures of. There are so many of them that they can be found just about everywhere, all day. Video is good because if a UFO is not present now, then just keep the camera rolling. Something will show up if you are patient. You won't see them until you process the video and examine it, often frame by frame. There is software that can help with this, but again, finding the UFOs is not the problem. They are all over the place. The problems are simply technical in nature, and we can address all of that one step at a time. So, you can see that there are a lot of moving parts going on. Disclosure is going to happen, and it starts in a big way very soon because of new abilities to take good videos of the ships. But because of this, the oppressive ETs are under time pressure to get arrangements signed by human leadership sooner rather than later. And triggering major human crises on this planet are part of the plan to get human leadership to sign those agreements. So, in an odd way, Farsight is a major factor in pushing this entire agenda along. If Farsight did not exist, disclosure might not happen for a long while. People would continue to have trouble taking pictures of UFOs. The true story of this planet's history would remain hidden from the masses, and the oppressive ETs could continue along the same lines that they have for the past many years. But disclosure changes everything. Everything. The oppressive ETs cannot keep doing what they have been doing as soon as lots of people know that the ET phenomenon is real and that it has been real for a very long time. But disclosure will only work if it is decentralized. It is not a top-down thing. It will only work if everyone is involved. And this means that it will only work if everyone who wants can go out and take their own pictures of the ET ships. Stopping that from happening is the only way ET disclosure can be slowed down, but no one can stop disclosure from happening at this point. No one. You're going to take those pictures. Let me spend a moment talking about UFO security. It will help you understand why you have to take videos of the ET ships a certain way. One of the reasons that we at Farsight have long recommended that you follow all of our projects and news forecasts closely, including our ET news forecast, is so that you can see that the galaxy is not a peaceful place. The ETs always approach one another with their guns loaded, always. The New Age idea that the universe is all good and that humans simply need to wake up to that fact by accepting the blissful happiness of interacting with our loving extraterrestrial brothers and sisters is total propaganda that is being fed into this civilization by very oppressive extraterrestrials who have their own agenda. The oppressive ETs have mastered how to control a population through psychological means, which means that they can keep a society passive while they do whatever they want with it. So. What evidence do we have that the UFOs are at odds with one another? That they fight? That they have to defend themselves from their enemies? What evidence do we have that UFOs are not blissful warriors of peace and tranquility? Again, remember that we have two primary groupings of extraterrestrials in the near-Earth environment. There are the oppressive ETs, who we identify as a coalition of reptilians and members of the Orion Collective. 
And there are the free will ETs who want to free humanity from the Earth prison and kick the oppressive ETs out of the solar system. But the free will ETs have a catch. They will only act to help a population if that population decides of its own free will that they want that help. Long story. But it is a fundamental fact of the free will ETs. They will respect a society's choice to be slaves. The oppressive ETs know this about the free will ETs, so they are using this as part of their plan to get the free will ETs to leave them alone. So with these two basic groupings, you can see that their ships can never be undefended at any time. And defending those ships becomes really important when all sorts of things can happen that destroy those ships, including things that look like accidents but are really cleverly disguised attacks. So there are two primary ways that the ET ships defend themselves that are staring you right in the face. In fact, those two ways are the exact things that have frustrated people for so long who want to see the ship so that they can confirm in their own minds that extraterrestrials exist in the first place. Let's start with the first way. One of the ways that the ET ships on both sides defend themselves from their enemies is by constantly moving their ships with incredible speed and rapid changes in direction. That is a major reason why it is so hard to capture UFOs on video. They don't stay still long enough to capture good video using traditional methods, and that is the point. They change direction in an apparently random manner when they fly about because it is harder to shoot a rapidly moving object that changes direction randomly than it is to shoot a slowly moving object that moves in only one direction. Moreover, the technology that the ships use allows them to move rapidly and change directions nearly instantly without having acceleration effects on the occupants. So rapid movements and instantaneous changes in direction act as a constant layer of defense for the ET ships. Anything less makes them vulnerable. And again, we are primarily talking about defense from other ET ships. They defend themselves because they have a long history of being shot down and rapid and random movements is one layer of this defense. So let's expand upon this a bit. When you see the footage of UFOs zooming about with incredible speed and then changing directions in a near random manner, put two and two together. Draw the right conclusions. They are not doing this just for fun. You are seeing evidence that the ETs are not all happy campers. They have enemies, lots of enemies, and they have to constantly defend themselves from attacks from those enemies. The ETs also use other mechanisms of defense, but the rapid movements and sudden changes in direction are things that you can witness with your own cameras. And now you know why the ET ships do this. Don't be frustrated by this, learn from it. If the galaxy was a peaceful place, do you think those ET ships would move like that? If they had no enemies, wouldn't they just cruise about taking in the scenery like tourists? <laughs> the manic movement of those ships are for good reasons. When you see those movements, you are witnessing firsthand evidence that the galaxy is not at peace. And those new age gurus, channeled or otherwise, who are preaching peace, harmony, and unification with a host of smiling galactic neighbors are just feeding you propaganda garbage that is scripted by the oppressive ETs. The rapid and random movements of the ships is one piece of solid evidence that is staring you right in the face that this is the correct conclusion to draw. The galaxy is not at peace. Earth is run as a prison. And we need to trigger disclosure from within the masses in order to get the masses to wake up from within that prison and ask for help from the free will ETs. There is no other way forward. Now be mature and don't get angry with the free will ETs. You don't know what they have gone through to get where they are today. They have a good reason for being so fanatical about insisting that societies choose things of their own free will. Without that decision from the society, they are no different from the oppressive ETs who just want to impose their will on people. Learn about the free will ETs. Understand why they act the way they do. They are offering you a pathway to freedom. They are telling you the conditions that are required for you to get their help. This is who they are. 
It does not help you to demand that they be different and help you without your collective decision to ask for their help. You are being told what to do in very clear and practical terms. Over the next few months, learn about what you need to do with your cameras and then do it. Be part of the army that frees this planet. So, when you get ready to take videos of the ET ships, watch how they move. That is part of the evidence that is necessary to prove to yourself and everyone else that we need to pick our allies carefully. Slavers make very bad allies. They want slaves, not friends. You want evidence that the slavers exist? Take your own videos and watch the ships move like crazy. Again, they are not moving like that for no reason. When you witness the movements of the ships firsthand, be smart about what you are seeing. Be smart. Now let's move to the second way that is staring you right in the face that gives you evidence that the galaxy is not at peace and that the ET groups are at odds with one another. Why do you think that the UFO ships cannot be easily recorded on video with a stock camera using the visible light spectrum? Forget about the scripted New Age crap that you have been told over the years about how the ships come from a higher dimension. That invisibility is part of their cloaking technology. Our own militaries use cloaking technology as well, and much of that technology has been obtained by reverse engineering some of the ET cloaking technology that has come from crashed UFOs. The complete ET version of cloaking technology is more advanced than current human versions, but the purpose is the same, which is to make their ships as invisible as possible. Again, this is a security issue, and it is yet another layer of protection that the ships utilize to protect themselves from other ET ships. To capture most ET ships on camera, you normally need filters for your camera that extend the range of the camera beyond the visible light part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, the visible light part of the electromagnetic spectrum is bookended by the infrared on the lower end and the ultraviolet on the higher end. All ET ships leak something into some area of the electromagnetic spectrum. The trick is to figure out where that leakage is. Normally, stock cameras are designed to filter out the infrared and the ultraviolet parts of the electromagnetic spectrum so that the sensor of the camera only picks up the visible light part. So to see the ships, you need to bypass this automatic filtering. And there are two approaches. The first is cheap and really easy to do, and that is to apply a filter on the outside of the lens that helps to diminish the visible light part of the spectrum from hitting the sensor, thereby causing the camera to let in more radiation total, which amps up the infrared parts. It is a good and inexpensive approach when using cell phone cameras, and we will talk about how to do this later. Our plan is to have an expert come in and discuss how he has used this approach successfully many times. But another way is to modify the camera itself so as to remove the internal filters that block the infrared, the ultraviolet, or both parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. That changes the camera to what is called a full spectrum camera. Then to see things normally with the camera, you have to reapply appropriate filters to the outside of the lens since the ones inside the camera have been removed. This approach is more complicated and more expensive, but it can be done. Again, we will explain all about how this is done in later videos. Now, you can ask, why stop with the infrared and ultraviolet ends of the electromagnetic spectrum? Why not let in radiation into the camera that goes all across the electromagnetic spectrum? The reason is simple. We are limited by what the camera sensors can detect. The camera sensors can detect radiation from the infrared to the ultraviolet, with the visible light part of the spectrum being in the middle. Now the filters that are inside of all the cameras are designed to cut out the infrared and ultraviolet parts so as to make good images with visible light parts only. So, if you take out the filters, the best you can get is the part of the spectrum that includes infrared and visible light and ultraviolet. The sensors cannot do better than that. Now, it is possible to design sensors that can do better than that, but they are not available to normal people with consumer or professional grade cameras. Again, most cameras are designed to use only the visible light parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. and 
They do this by applying filters to screen out the other parts, so there is no need for consumer or professional grade cameras to use sensors that pick up parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that go lower than infrared or higher than ultraviolet. So the camera manufacturers don't spend the money to put in sensors that could do this. But this is not a problem. You can see plenty if you do something to allow the infrared and the ultraviolet, or both parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, to hit the camera sensor. Again, there are two ways to do this. First, an external filter that selectively blocks out part of the visible light spectrum causes the camera to use its automatic gain circuits to let in lots more light, total, and that causes an increase in the infrared part of the spectrum that is hitting the camera sensor, and that overwhelms the internal infrared filter a bit, and you can see stuff in that realm of the sensor. That is the cheapest and easiest way to shoot footage of the UFOs, and it works well with cell phones. The second way, which is a bit more complicated and a bit more expensive, is to modify the camera itself. This second way is normally too difficult to do with cell phone cameras, but it can be done with regular cameras. This second way is to modify the internal filters that are built into the camera to stop the sensor from picking up infrared or ultraviolet parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. This topic of using filters with your cameras is more complicated than what I have just described. There are details that need to be explained, and we will talk more about that in another briefing since it involves an entirely new topic of using certain filters with your cameras or removing certain filters when you shoot your own videos. Depending on which approach you use, it is not a simple thing. As the months move forward, you will see us explain a lot of stuff. The topic is more complicated the deeper you get into it. We also have to talk about the types of cameras that work best with this. One step at a time. But rest assured that we do have some simple and inexpensive solutions to tell you about that do work with your cell phone cameras. And we have better solutions that work with better cameras if you want to go that route. But give us a chance to slowly spell out what is needed and how you do it. We have a lot to explain to you. What I have given you today is an overview of what is involved and what is coming in the next few months at Farsight. I ask your patience as we move forward with this. So that is it for this month's intelligence briefing. That is our synopsis of what to expect during the year 2023. Now, the only thing that we know for certain will happen is that we will be telling you lots of great stuff about all sorts of things throughout the year. Watch what we do closely. Know that we always have things on the burner, so to speak. Stuff that we are working on that you will see in finished form eventually. We have spent a lot of time explaining remote viewing, including the science of remote viewing, if you read all of our publications on the subject. But we also bring you news forecasts of human and extraterrestrial events, economic forecasts, and full explanations of a huge number of mysteries that have defied easy reasoning for a very long time. And now we are tipping the balance by showing you how to get physical evidence of the extraterrestrial presence here on Earth, physical evidence that you can obtain using your own camera equipment, all right here at Farsight. If you are a subscriber to farsightprime.com, you are getting stuff that is unique to this planet, stuff that you can get nowhere else. You are also giving us the resources to bring all of this right to your doorstep. You are the reason we exist. Thank you for supporting our efforts. I am Courtney Brown, Director of Farsight.